Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it out here to the weekend. Just about the weekend here for uh, the majority of us. Hope everyone's having a, uh, a good Friday so far. 9.53 a.m. California time here, November 1st, 2024. First day of November, goodness. Starting to feel like it out here in California. Pretty chilly this morning here. 3.9, the latest earthquake here in the South America area. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Make sure the bells are off, which they are. As uh, far as any significant movement overnight here, let's check out the largest magnitude. Um, in the last 24 hours, a 5.4 up here across the uh, area of Iceland to the southwest along the uh, Atlantic Ridge here, the Reckoness Ridge. Anything after midnight? Well, it looks like a 4.8 here across the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, one of the latest somewhat larger quakes as well with a 4.9. Nothing big yet. Uh, we're still a little early. We'll have to see how this uh, day unfolds. California area yesterday had a, a little bit of earthquake activity here on the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. Looks like they downgraded that earthquake there to a 2.8 originally coming in as a 2.9 now this is the area uh, this is just the last week here of seismic activity but uh, this is the area that popped off a 4.4 here uh, about a month ago stirred up some national interest there on the puente hills stress fault because it's capable of producing a 7.5 and it under it basically runs underneath the los angeles area over here towards the beverly hills region and it's a blind thrust fault meaning that it's not visible from the surface but it is underneath this area here and it's capable again is producing a mid seven average intervals run every couple thousands of years or so and i still can't find a specific date on when the last one hit so obviously that is a little concerning because, you know, a 7.5 underneath Los Angeles is going to do way more damage uh, in the vicinity of this area compared to an 8.1 here across the San Andreas Fault. And that's due to proximity, right? Even though the magnitude is larger over here across the San Andreas Fault in terms of uh, potential magnitudes, it would make the 7.5 here much more damaging uh, underneath this uh, at this area due to being directly underneath this region as far as that fault system goes so a little bit of movement stirring up on that in the last 24 hours and also here in the last week looks like that's starting to uh stir back up here a little bit so we'll continue to keep an eye on that the latest one shows a 0.8 from this morning a little bit further west here so we got to watch it see if this starts to migrate a little bit further along the uh the fault system out here not showing up here on the USGS map, um, but there, there obviously <laughs> there is a significant fault system underneath that area. As uh, far as anything above 2.5, aside from that, uh, let's see what we got here. Looks like outside of the where is this Portola area? 2.9 early this morning. Aside from that, uh, pretty quiet out here across Northern California, Bay Area nothing zip zero showing up there across the area long valley super volcano just outside the uh, super volcano there small swarm of 1.0 magnitude earthquakes there outside of tom's place but really nothing of any major interest there for now of course that is a super volcano california does have its own super volcano san andreas fault continues to sleep for now pacific northwest relatively quiet let's check out the trimmer map here i know didn't get a chance to jump on last night. I had a fairly eventful night. 32 epicenters of Trimmer across the extreme southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Nothing going on there uh, for now in terms of elevated Trimmer movement. Uh, oil fields out here across Texas getting hit pretty hard here in the last week. Got uh, a total tally of about 112 earthquakes out here in the last week alone across Texas. Uh, today, still seeing some movement out here, about 20 earthquakes in various areas of oil fields out there across the Permian Basin area. The eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on there. Middle America Trench, handful of deeper or handful of earthquakes here across the area, just off the coast of Mexico. 4.6, 15 miles deep, uh, that earthquake was followed up just under an hour later with a 4.3 here. 
a little bit shallower. So you might want to watch this area here. Deep earthquake activity almost immediately triggering some shallower adjustment there along that segment of the plate boundary. So definitely keep an eye on that as that could be a sign there of uh, maybe some further large scale activity about ready to take place. Uh, 3.9 South America area there that's going to be down here across the, the uh, Peru Chile Trench. Where last 24 hours there, a couple fours, nothing after midnight in terms of elevated seismic activity, but there is a 3.9 now. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, there's that uh, 5.4 out there in the Atlantic, a little bit of movement north of Iceland as well. These are um, oceanic rift boundaries out here. That was late last night. And it looks like these other two quakes there from yesterday as well. Most of the newer movement here today uh, appears to be back over here across the Japan area. Mediterranean area seeing some elevated movement as well. With some fours out here across the area outside of the Turkey region here. Indian Ocean 5.1. It's an older quake, though. Alaska fairly quiet. There's a couple newer quakes up there. Let's see what we got going on here across the Aleutian Trench. Um, this morning, 3.5. Looks like uh, 2.8 as well from this morning as well. So, yeah, there's a little bit of seismic activity out here. Uh, my voice is still not 100% back to normal, folks. It's weird. All right, uh, Hawaii showing some activity off the southeastern edge here. Pahala area, Kilauea volcano. Not a whole lot going on, but we're noticing that little stretching going on here across the area off this region towards the Lohi Seamount in the last, uh, I'd say the last couple weeks or so. You can follow a trail out there leading to there. But uh, really nothing of any major interest right now in terms of changes across the area, but we'll continue to watch it. Uh, space weather activity here. I wonder if that's why I'm feeling <clears throat> under the weather, so to speak. Proton event has been elevated here for about six days, and that's about as long as I've been sick here. I've had this persistent cough. It just won't come up. I mean, it's weird. I don't have a fever, nothing else, no body shakes or ills or you know, negative feelings, it's just right in my throat. It's really weird. So proton events still continuing, mainly across the polar regions, but it seems odd that I'm experiencing the, the sickness right about the time when all this stirred up. Those are charged protons being shot off from the sun that affect the ionosphere and uh, shows mainly that it's only gonna affect the polar regions here, but who knows? I know a lot of people can tell when we're elevated out here in terms of proton events and, you know, large solar flares. Let's see what we got for solar flares overnight. Ah, a couple low-grade M flares here. There's our X flare from yesterday, X 2.03. A couple M flares since then. Really nothing of any uh, major value, but I, I wouldn't doubt it here. Looking at this map, we should maybe start to see one here now. Uh, start to peak up. Seems like it runs in about a 24-hour interval or not, if the sunspots are continuing to hang in there, that is. Uh, this is the area of interest here, 3878. That's an image from last night, tonight, or uh, today's image. Uh, still shows a little bit of complexity there within that central core. Uh, so that does harbor some potential for some stronger flaring, potentially even some X-flare activity. So... We'll definitely watch this. This is all surrounded by a couple different magnetic um, areas of different colors there. So that's definitely a spot here we got to watch. I wouldn't doubt if that pops off another strong flare here really soon. Uh, back over here, southwestern quadrant of the sun. These sunspots are basically starting to drift off there. They'll be out of sight, out of mind here in the coming days. Uh, but I suppose they still harbor a potential for some M flare activity across that region but uh right here gotta watch this area all right so elevated threat 25 percent chance for x flare m flare 75 percent chance c flare around 99 percent chance or so and still got a uh, chance there of seeing some further proton events there at 50 percent no major roars in the forecast for now folks we'll see if we can uh change that in the coming days 
uh, California. We've got a little bit of rain coming in out here across the West Coast right now. I'm looking forward to that. Maybe I'll do a little bit of cleansing out there. It's a little chilly, though. Uh, I may go out there and just let the rain see if it can clear out my system. It's always good to get outside and, um, you know, pending health-wise, yeah, I'm, I'm under the weather, but also at the same time staying inside, uh, breathing the same old stale air is not good. You always obviously want to get some fresh air into your system. Uh, so I'll probably go out there when it starts raining and just see if I can clear out my this negativity in me in terms of the sickness. So that's, uh, I'm looking forward to that later this afternoon. Uh, rain throughout Texas. Uh, more severe weather out here for the Southern Plains as we head into uh, the weekend and also early next week. It's just set up after set up here of intense potential severe weather. But these guys need the rain and it's coming, but it comes at a cost here with some severe weather potential. Uh, colder system dipping down there from the... Uh, the Canada area into the Intermountain West regions, bringing with it some blue stuff. That's snow. And also potential hurricane activity there as we head towards the uh, next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Uh, got some tropical systems out here. We're going to have to watch uh, some more rain for the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. And even Southern California going to get in on some uh, rain showers as well as we head towards the Looks like the November 13th time period. And more severe weather back across the plains. Goodness, this almost reminds me of a of a, a springtime pattern there. So you guys are going to get a lot of rain out there over the next week, couple weeks or so. Should almost eliminate the drought here in this area, but also the severe weather potential ramps up. Uh, for severe weather today, not a whole lot. Got some thunderstorm activity out here around my neck of the woods associated with with this low pressure that's coming in uh, aside from that marginal risk for some severe weather across texas and new mexico mainly due to uh looks like a little bit of wind and a little bit of hail but in terms of tornado potential less than two percent here across the entire area seismograph stations out here look uh pretty calm not for sure what's going on with the parkfield station there but uh if it doesn't come on here within an hour or so, I'll just uh, reset it. But uh, yeah, pretty quiet out there for now across the uh, the planet in terms of plate tectonics. Hope everyone had a, a good Halloween last night. Wasn't too crazy around here, but uh, heard quite a few sirens for a little bit. Not for sure what's going on. A lot of people tend to go a little on the crazy side when... Uh, Halloween comes around, but now we enter a new month. Also, uh, when well, we got daylight savings time, we fall back, right? If I remember right, this weekend, Saturday night, I'll have to double check that. But uh, I mean, early, early sunsets. Uh, I kind of, I, I for one, kind of like it when it's darker earlier. Uh, I've had enough of you know, 13 hour days of sunlight and 115 degrees here in California. Bring on the cold, bring on the early sunsets. I love it. it means I can barbecue at about 5.30 or so and it's dark. Love it. All right, I am out of here, folks. Have yourself a good Friday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, unless something major changes. There's not a whole lot of elevated seismic activity yet. But uh, things can change here in the blink of an eye, so stay safe out there.